I've got a Magic the Gathering video for you. It's been a little while, uh, but this is not just any Magic the Gathering video, no, because today we are going to be opening these packs from the brand new Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth set. This is perhaps the most anticipated, most hyped magic set in a very long while, uh, possibly ever in some sense. Um, it, of course, is a crossover with the Lord of the Rings uh, property. Um, and so the cards are based on characters and creatures and locations and events from the legendary trilogy. But uh, there's another element to this set that makes it really desirable beyond just being a an awesome crossover um, that, you know, many people would be into. Um, and that thing that elevates it beyond is the One Ring. <laughs> the One One Ring. The single One Ring. So, you may have heard, um, because it's been getting some headlines lately, you may have heard that in one of these collector boosters somewhere in the world, but only one. There is a very special one ring card. A one of one. One ring card. The only one to exist in the world. And, um, of course, whenever you make anything so rare and exclusive, people absolutely lose their minds over it. And that's doubly the case when it comes to Magic the Gathering, because people already kind of lose their minds over um, the, you know, gambling. Well, it's not really quote-unquote gambling, I guess it is, aspect, you know, the random aspect of, of um, TCGs and, and booster packs and, and whatnot. So, anyway, needless to say, there's been a whole lot of talk, a whole lot of hype uh, around this this fabled card, and so far, at least as of the time of recording, no one has found the card. At least no one has come forward and said they have found the card. Now it's totally possible someone has, just hasn't announced it, but uh, so far uh, nothing has come forth. And um, that has led to some, some escalating insanity with regards to uh, putting bounties out on the card uh, back prior to release when they first announced that this was going to be a thing. Um, I saw some people putting out, you know, $100,000 bounties on this card, which in itself is insane. $100,000 for a piece of cardboard. Now, if the uh, reporting is to be believed, there is a, a game store, a card store in Spain, I think, that has put out a, wait for it, two million dollar bounty on this card. Two million dollars. What are we doing here, people? Um, Anyway, you know, whether that's legitimate or not, whether they'd actually pay that given the opportunity or not, who knows? But people do get really crazy <laughs> about their rare magic cards. So all of this is to say that there is this extra level of hype around this set and some, you know, famous streamers like XQC and such have been really getting into this, buying like thousands of dollars of product, trying to pull this singular card. So, um, buying one of these packs, the collector booster, is kind of like buying a lottery ticket at this point. And uh, their prices reflect that. This single pack of 15 MTG cards cost about 50 bucks Canadian, um, which is a lot <laughs> for, for 
for a single pack, albeit a collector's booster. Um, the collector boosters, of course, do contain a lot of fun cards, just are they guaranteed to? They um, have, you know, alternate art versions and foil versions and extra rares and stuff, so, you know, uh, by default they're pretty fun to open, but, yeah, the, uh, the infinitesimally small chance of pulling that one ring card um, has really elevated the prices of these things. There are uh, other one ring cards, I should make that clear. There are different versions of the one ring in this set, and, um, and, uh, you know, the, the common versions will not command such a price, of course. Um, and there's several different sort of numbered sets of increasing rarity of one ring printings with different art and whatnot. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. We're, we're not going to pull them here, but, um, Anyway, that's, that's the deal here, so, um, and then these packs, these are just set boosters, so they, uh, I, I don't believe there's a possibility of pulling the one, one ring in, in these set boosters, but, uh, they are still a little more, uh, spicy than a typical draft booster, uh, with some extra chances at rare cards and foil cards and whatnot, so, okay, so, um, all of that being said, all of that being said, we are here to have a chill time. And those who have watched MTG pack openings here on my channel before know that I take it really, really slow. We look at every card, we admire the art, I read all the flavor text, all that stuff. Um, and I've actually not, uh, opened any packs from this set, uh, yet, and I've not really looked at any spoilers, so it's all gonna be new to me. Um, so we will take our time, and we will appreciate the aesthetics, uh, the, uh, Lord of the Ringsiness of these cards, and then, uh, at the end we'll open the Collector Booster. <laughs> I'll save, I'll save it for last, just in case, you gotta build that hype. Um, but of course, if you want, you can always just skip, skip ahead down in the, the, uh, video play bar there. I'll put timestamps if you want. Obviously, you will know if I pulled something extra rare. I'll probably have it in the thumbnail or the title or something, right? But, uh, anyway, but there's fun and beautiful stuff to be had, regardless, one way or another. So, let's put these aside for now. Um, the popularity of this set does extend beyond the, uh, insane quest for the One Ring, though. Um, even finding just the set boosters has been a little challenging locally. I had to go to a couple of shops. Um, so, people are clearly, you know, snapping these up uh, just because they think it's cool. And I, I do certainly think it's cool. I think it is a, a match made in heaven. Um, and, uh, it's honestly kind of shocking that it's taken this long for a Lord of the Rings slash MTG crossover to happen. Although it does seem like these days, Wizards is finally opening up to doing those kinds of crossovers in a way they, they weren't historically. So, um, we have here our first set booster. We've got Gandalf the Grey, by the looks of it, on the front. I suppose this is part of their new Universes Beyond branding, which I guess, uh, you know, encompasses these sorts of crossovers with other IPs, other properties. I know they did a Warhammer 40k themed crossover last year, I believe. I did not get in on any of that, but, um, which I, I kind of 
that. I wish I had. But I don't think they had boosters of any kind. I think they only had, like, uh, pre-built commander decks, which is a little less exciting to me. So, I need my, I need my gambling hit. <laughs> I need my, <laughs> my booster packs. So, uh, I'm gonna use little scissors to cut this open just in the uh, interest of keeping it a bit quieter. There 
is a, a game, a video game coming out, uh, the name of which I forget right now, but it's basically a kind of survival craft type game where uh, you play dwarves trying to retake Moria, and they've showed some footage, and it looks like maybe a little rough around the edges, but actually pretty fun. I don't know, conceptually, I like that. So I, I definitely have my eye on that game. I hope it turns out good. Here we have another rare King of the Oath Breakers, a legendary spirit noble for two colorless, a white and a black mana with flying. Uh, I'm thinking this might be, uh, you know, the creature, the king of the ghost army that, uh, uh Aragorn enlists to help, um, in the, uh, the battle, uh, for, for Gondor there, but the Pelennor fields, not positive though. Um, whenever king of the Oathbreakers or another spirit you control becomes the target of a spell, it phases out. Treat it and anything attached to it as though they don't exist until your next turn. Whenever King of the Oathbreakers or another spirit you control phases in, create a tapped 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Of course, that means you also can't cast spells on it yourself. Uh, it can't benefit from uh, spells cast on it, uh, you know, useful or, or detrimental. Um, but you could do that in order to trigger the, the token generation. That's pretty, pretty cool armor. Or armor artwork. <laughs> I mean, it has pretty cool armor too. That's neat. Friend of the Shire. <laughs> we got the uh, the art card for for this. Although this is different art, uh, maybe this is an alternate art version. I'm not sure. Legendary creature Avatar Wizard. He is a blue creature. Three colorless and a blue mana. He is a two four with flash. You may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. Okay, that's pretty cool. So you can cast Gandalf and sorceries at instant speed once Gandalf's in play. Whenever the ring tempts you, if you choose a creature other than Gandalf, a friend of the Shire, as your ring bearer, draw a card. Interesting. He is uncommon and uncommon. I do really like the, uh, the frame, though. That's really pretty. Lovely. I guess maybe we should have done this the other way, because I think we're going from our rarest cards down to our least rare cards. But, oh well. We'll do the subsequent ones the other way. White Hand, a four mana orc soldier creature, two colorless, a black and a red for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever another creature you control dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on Ugluk of the White Hand. If that creature was a goblin or orc, put two plus one, plus one counters on Ugluk instead. I am Oakluk. I command. I return to Isengard by the shortest road. Yeah. Yep, that's Norkel, right? <laughs> the, uh, you know, aesthetic here is obviously a bit different than the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings movies because this is 
based on the literary works rather than the films, but it's pretty darn close. It's pretty hard not to be, uh, you know, influenced and inspired by those films. A it's Pippin Peregrine Took. A three mana legendary halfling citizen. Two colorless in a forest. He's a two three. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus an additional food token are created instead. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and food tokens are artifacts where you can pay two and tap it and sacrifice it to gain three life. And if you sacrifice three food, you get to draw a card. This has got to be... Okay, I thought it was maybe going to be a second breakfast quote, but no. So Sam, get breakfast ready for half past nine. Those hobbits, they do like their food. And here we have Peregrine Duck enjoying a picnic in the Shire under a beautiful weeping willow. Oh, and Mary. Wow, what are the chances? Mary and Pippin together in a pack. Mary a duck, brandy buck. He is two mana, two two. Green, just like uh, Pippin. Whenever one or more halflings you control attack a player, create a food token. <laughs> Which is kind of a funny concept, like food's just popping out when they're attacking, but I guess it's just supposed to be for the flavor of flavor of it, you know. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, my dear old hobbit, you don't allow for the inquisitiveness of friends. I have known about the existence of the ring for years. He's pouring himself out a pot of tea, or a cup of tea. Looking very cozy. In a hobbit hole. The art has been delightful so far. Really, really good. Hey, Bilbo. This is a uh, Bilbo retired burglar. I suspect there are several Bilbos in this set. Bilbo retired burglar is a, a three mana halfling rogue. Interesting. Um, a colorless, a blue and a red. When Bilbo retired burglar enters or leaves the battlefield, the ring tempts you. When Bilbo deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. I don't know half of you half as well as I should like, <laughs> and I like less than half of you half as well as you deserve. Classic. An excellent quote. Retired burglar, of course, because he was the famous hobbit burglar in The Hobbit. Burgling from the dragon smog. A Rohirrim Lancer. Man of the Mark. A red 1-1 one -one human knight. With menace, this creature can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. And when Rohirrim Lancer dies, the ring attempts you. Dire deeds awake. Dark is it eastward. Let horse be bridled, horn be sounded. Good old Theoden. Okay, all right, that's great. We get a second breakfast card. I'm very pleased by this. It looks like Mary and Pippin having second breakfast. A three mana white instant, up to two target creatures. Each get plus two, plus one until end of turn, and create a food token. The 
hobbits of the Shire were fond of six meals a day when they could get them. Uh, and for a second breakfast, this is a magnificent spread we've got. That's immense cake and a bowl of, looks like berries and cream or something. So a bowl of eggs and cheese and, oh my gosh. That's, uh, that's enough food for, for an entire day. Hey, speaking of food, Limba spread. <laughs> a two mana artifact. When Limbus enters the battlefield, scry one and then draw a card. And it is food, so you can do the food thing with it. When Lembus is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, its owner shuffles it into their library. It's always more Lembus spread. They could eat of it and find new strength, even as they ran. Oh, look at this art. A generous ent. A generous ent. A tree folk creature, naturally. Six mana, five, seven, with reach. So it can block flying creatures. When generous ent enters the battlefield, create a food token. Man, there's a lot of food in this set. <laughs> I feel like you could have food tokens just everywhere, all the time. Ah, uh, and forest cycling. So that's an old mechanic that's returning, but it allows you to choose to, uh, you know, pay a colorless, discard this card, and then search your deck for a forest. A plains. A gorgeous piece of art there. Looks like Gandalf the White. Perhaps on the edge of uh, Rohan. And there's a flock of sheep behind him. The card art, or I should say the land art in MTG has always been one of my favorite things about the game. It's just so beautiful. It inspires the imagination. Oh, wait. Did we get two foil mines of Moria, or did I just stick that one on the back? Oh yeah, no, I just stuck it on the back. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what is the likelihood of that? Um, but yes. So that there is our first pack. Of course, our art card. That was a fun one, though. starting with the commons, or land I guess, an 
island. So this looks to be a river. Perhaps the Brandywine on the eastern border of the Shire. Or something else. <laughs> I don't know, that's the only named river I can think of right now in Middle-earth. There's the one that, uh, is it the Anduin? The one that flows, like, past Rohan and Gondor. It's the big one. I can't remember what it's called, but maybe it's that. Anyway, it's pretty. We'll put that over here. Next up, we have... Um, Many Partings, a one-mana green sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Create a food token, because we need more food. For you in all the lands of the West, there will ever be a welcome, dearest friend, says Aragorn. Nice art. It's very warm, you know, very cozy kind of art. Okay, what's next? Pippin's Bravery. Uh -huh. A one mana green instant. You may sacrifice a food. <laughs> if you do, dark creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. Otherwise, that creature gets plus two, plus two. Pippin stabbed upwards, and the written blade of Westerness pierced through the hide and went deep into the vitals of the troll. Now, is this a cave troll? Doesn't look like it. Not sure. Can't remember at what point Pippin slays a troll. Could be in defense of uh, Minas Tirith. So this is not actually Sting the sword, it's like an instant, but it's Sting doing a thing. Two mana white instant, Hobbit's Sting deals X damage to target creature, where X is the number of creatures you control, plus the number of foods you control. Actually, that could be pretty solid, given the amount of food generation we've seen here so far. One for the Shire, cried Aragorn. The Hobbit's bite is deep. You have a good blade, Frodo, son of Drogo. Indeed. Stabbing at some goblins, by the looks of it, in Moria. Rosy Cotton. Rosy Cotton is, of course, Sam's, uh, well, beloved, ultimately, Sam's wife, but, uh, the one he fancies at the beginning of the journey. A three-mana white hobbit, or halfling. When Rosy Cotton of South Lane enters the battlefield, create a food token. <laughs> Whenever you create a token, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control, other than Rosie. Out there buffing everyone with the food. Another pretty picture. Feeding the family. So this must be after. After she and Sam are married. Because that looks like they're... They're brood. I'm guessing. Butterbur, Bree Innkeeper, of course, a legendary human peasant, white and green, four mana, three, three, at the beginning of your end step, if you don't control a food, create a food token, always gotta be food, I hope you'll be comfortable, you'll be wanting supper, I don't doubt, as soon as maybe, this way now. What a hero. 
Yeah, food is such a thing in this set, holy cow. Food tokens everywhere. The mouth of Sauron. Creepy. Five mana, blue and black. Three, four, creature. When the mouth of Sauron enters the battlefield, the target player mills three cards. Then amass orcs X, where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in that player's graveyard. Okay, interesting. Um, the amass uh, mechanic is... Um, I think it, it is actually an old mechanic that's being reintroduced, but now it's in the context of an army of orcs, where you basically have an orc token, an orc army token, that has a bunch of ways of getting buffed up, uh, such as this. It describes it here. Spooky art. Okay, I think we're gonna be into the rares now. Let's see what we got. Oh no, one more uncommon. Oh, Theoden, King of Rohan. A three mana red and white creature. A two three. Whenever Theoden, King of Rohan, or another human enters the battlefield under your control, target creature gains double strike until end of turn. Could be pretty solid in a human tribal deck. Dark have been my dreams of late, but I feel new awakened. I only fear that already you have come too late, Gandalf. His dreams were dark because of a worm tongue. Grima worm tongue. Whispering corruption in his ear. Okay, now we're probably in the rares. Nope, I keep saying that. We're not. I think there's a variable number of rares. It could be anywhere between one and four, so I guess we're getting less lucky here. Shadow summoning. White and black sorcery. Create two tapped one one white spirit creature tokens with flying. Whose shall the horn be? Who shall call them from the grey twilight, the forgotten people, the heir of him to whom the oath they swore? Melbeth the seer. That would be Aragorn, to whom they will respond. Okay, let's see if we got him. Ooh. Okay, we got a full art card. It's not like a super rare one or anything, but it is a fun uh, full art thingy. Um, or borderless. I can't remember what you call this, but Markwood Bats. Markwood Bats. A four mana black bat creature. A 2-3 with flying. Whenever you create or sacrifice a token, each opponent loses one life. Could actually be pretty solid. Like it's a little pricey, but there's a lot of token creation in this. Like, I think the food counts as tokens, right? So, so many bats. Merkwood bats. Alright, let's see if we get some fun stuff here. We've only got, I got three cards. Let's see what we got. Except the last card will be a token of some kind, so... We've got Gloin, uh, Dwarf Emissary. Legendary Dwarf Advisor, a 3-mana red 3-3. Three, three. What have you cast a historic spell? Uh, there it says, artifacts, legendaries, and sagas are historic. Okay. Uh, create a treasure token. This ability triggers, triggers only once each turn. Some mana gen. And okay, you can 
then sacrifice treasure to goad target creature until your next turn that creature attacks each combat if able and attacks a player other than you if able. Interesting. That plays into his role as an emissary. Cool. Magnificent beard to be sure. Uh, a uh, 
I guess either cannibalism or like a sacrifice for Shalab. Spies veered on stairs, double vigilance, patrol to head of stairs, Shagrat's orders. Nasty end. Ooh. What's going on here? This looks like, um, I guess this is, uh, Grima Wormtongue killing, uh, uh, Sauron. Is that what's happening here? It's kind of what it looks like. A two mana black instant has an additional cost to cast this spell. Sacrifice a creature. Draw two cards. If the sacrifice creature was legendary, draw three cards instead. Yeah, because there's a lot of legendary creatures in this set, so. And that's the end of that. And that's the end for Sormon. And I wish I hadn't, or needn't have seen it. But it's a good riddance, says Sam. I feel like it'd be pretty hard to actually, you know, like, cut his throat there given all the beard in the way, the epicness of the beard. <laughs> beard defense. Rush the room. One mana red instant. Target creature gets plus one plus zero and gains first strike until end of turn. If it's a goblin or orc, it also gains haste until end of turn. There's a horn blast and a rush of feet, and orcs, one after another, leapt into the chamber. A Mordor trebuchet. It's a spiky looking thing. A three mana black artifact creature, a wall. A one for wall with defender, as walls do. Whenever you attack with one or more goblins and or orcs, create a two one colorless construct artifact creature token with flying named ballistic boulder that's tapped and attacking. Sacrifice that token at end of combat. Okay, that's kind of fun. Ballistic boulder indeed. An Urukai Berserker. Three mana black a three two. When Urukai Berserker enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. What of the dawn? We are the Urukai. We do not stop the fight for night or day, for fair weather or for storm. We come to kill by sun or moon. What of the dawn? Yikes. Pretty aggro. Into some uncommon commons here. Bill Fernie. Bree Swindler. I don't remember Bill Fernie, but it's been a long time since I read the books. Two mana, blue human rogue. Two one. Whenever Bill Fernie and Bree Swindler becomes blocked, choose one. Create a treasure token. Or target opponent gains control of target horse. You control. <gasps> My horse deck. <laughs> the horse deck. You guys, if you saw my last MTG video, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, target horse you control. If they do, remove Bill Fernie from combat and create three treasure tokens. Pardon me. I'm getting sleepy. Hopefully you are too. <laughs> That's a, a really random card. I don't know. Uh... I guess if you've got horses, you could maybe put them to good use. I don't think we've seen any horses yet, though. Not here. Oh, nice. Nice saga. 
Oath of the Grey Host. As the sack enters, and after your draw step, add a lower counter to it and sacrifice once you reach three. At step one, you and target opponent each create a food token, because of course you do. <laughs> Say stage two, each opponent loses three life. Create a treasure token. At stage three, create three tapped one one white spirit creature tokens with flying. That's the arrival of the ghost army. Although I'm not quite sure what the food's about. That seems like a weird thing. I do not associate food with ghosts. <laughs> not sure why they create food. Oh, speaking of horses, right on cue, it's Shadowfax, Lord of Horses. A five mana red and white horse creature, 4-4. Four, four. Horses you control have haste. Aww. I'd have to put this in my horse deck, you guys. <laughs> so synergy. Whenever Shadowfax, the Lord of Horses, attacks, you may put a creature card with lesser power from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. That's fun. That's cool. Also, beautiful art. Just gorgeous. cards remaining. Ah, a full art many partings. So we've seen this one uh, in its regular uh, version, but this is the uh, extended art version, I guess. A tender moment between hobbits. Nice art, though. Pretty. Look at all the ghost 
ghostly spirits. This must be um, Legolas, Gimli, and Aragorn uh, gaining the the allegiance of the the spirits, right? Ghost Quarter, seventy-eight of eighty-one. I presume that's what this is, anyway. Lovely art, of course. Okay, uh, another one of these. A mountain this time, the Misty Mountains. Indeed. You can see Moria in there. Caradras, the, I believe, highest peak in the Misty Mountains. Isn't that where Gandalf fights the Balrog? I think so. Really like those lands. Oh, speaking of the Balrog, Lash of the Balrog, a one mana black sorcery as an additional cost to cast this spell. Sacrifice a creature or pay for colorless. Destroy target creature. Even as the Balrog fell, it swung its whip and the thongs lashed and curled about Gandalf's knees, dragging him to the brink of the abyss. Fly, you fools, he cried, and was gone. Pretty epic moment. Pretty angry Balrog. Vice club. <laughs> In this case, poor goblin is the club. Two mana red instant as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice an artifact or creature. Gobble club. Improvised club deals four damage to any target. Uh, for a couple of pins, says troll and grins. I'll eat thee too and gnaw thy shins. Sam telling a story, I guess. The unfortunate goblin. The black breath. Three mana, black sorcery creatures your opponents control. Get minus one, minus one until end of turn. The ring tempts you. When the black breath blows, death's shadow grows. A rhyme of olden days. Spooky. Claim the precious. <laughs> As is, I guess, uh, Smeagol. Uh, doesn't he kill his cousin uh, to take the ring? Uh, I think that's what's being depicted here. And three mana black sorcery, destroy target creature, the ring attempt to. I think it is a sad story, and it might have happened to others, even to some hobbits that I have known. A cautionary word from Gandalf. as the storm. Three mana blue instant. Target creature has base power and toughness 5-5 five, five until end of turn. And the ring tempts you. Lots of temptation going on here. This is uh, Galadriel, I suppose. I shall not be dark, but beautiful and terrible as the morning and the night. All shall love me and despair. That was Gladriel when she was tempted by the ring, of course. But she passed that test. She did not give in to temptation. Rise. 
rising of the day. Uh, this is like the new dawn rises kind of moment. Uh, three mana red enchantment creatures you control have haste. Legendary creatures you control get plus one plus zero. Not bad. Over the low hills the horns were sounding. Hastening down the long slopes were a thousand men on foot. Their swords were in their hands. Perhaps breaking the siege of Helm's Deep. Gimli, counter of kills. Speaking of Helm's Deep. Four mana. Red. Legendary Dwarf Warrior, a 4-3, with Trample, that seems about right. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, Gimli, Counter of Kills, deals 1 damage to that creature's controller. 21, cried Gimli. He hewed a two-handed stroke and laid the last orc before his feet. Now my count passes, Master Legolas. Couldn't let the elf beat him, of course. <laughs> Friendly rivalry. Wow, it's kind of weird. I don't know if these are intentionally put together. Maybe they are, actually. <laughs> I don't know. Because that's like... Oddly... Relevant. Same with, like, getting Mary and Pippin together. I don't know. Um, a two mana, red and green, instant. Target creature you control, and up to one other target legendary creature you control. Each deal damage equal to their power to target creature you don't control. <laughs> 42, Master Legolas, says Gimli. fun card. I like the flavor of that card. Okay, we could be getting into rares here. Uh, but no, we get Frodo Baggins. Frodo Baggins. Um, but an alternate frame version, like that uh, Gandalf friend of the Shire that we got. A green and white two mana halfling scout a one three whenever frodo baggins or another legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control the ring tempts you as long as frodo is your ring bearer it must be blocked if able huh interesting I'm actually not quite sure what this art is. I'm trying to figure out what I'm seeing here. Is this like the Eye of Sauron, I guess? Which is kind of a weird thing on a Frodo card. I mean, he does have, you know, he struggles with the Eye of Sauron, but I see no Frodo in this art. It's cool, though. Interesting. Okay. What we got? Uh -huh. Lobelia Sackville Baggins. A somewhat miserable hobbit. Legendary halfling. Three mana, black, two, three, with flash and menace. When Lobelia Sackville Baggins enters the battlefield, exile target creature card from an opponent's graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Then create X treasure tokens, where X is the exiled card's power. Interesting. I mean, that doesn't sound bad. It's an interesting, interesting mechanic. Okay, uh, last, last one. That was our rare, but this could also be a rare. Uh, nope. <laughs> uh, but it is, of course, a foil. Captain of Umbar. A three-mana blue human pirate. A 
two, three. Pay one, tap it, draw a card, then discard a card. There is a great fleet drawing near to the mouths of Anduin, manned by the Corsairs of Umbar in the south. They have long ceased to fear the might of Gondor, says Baragond. Indeed. And a spirit token. Makes sense. We've got a lot of cards. We've seen well, at least a handful of cards that uh, that would create spirit tokens. Good stuff. All right, friends. Well, the time has come. The time has come to open the collector booster, our lottery ticket. Uh, Frodo on the front looking a little bit evil truth be told tempted by the ring let's see what we've got in here lots of fun stuff no doubt I like the art. 
a three mana green instant. Sacrifice land. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tapped. And then shuffle. If you control a creature with power four or greater, instead search your library for up to three basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tapped. And then shuffle. Welcome to the tree garth of Orthanc. I guess the Ents are about having big creatures on the battlefield. Gollum, a patient plotter. I like that art, especially in foil, the way he kind of just blends into the background there, but at certain angles he pops. A halfling or two mana black a three one. When Gollum, a patient plotter, leaves the battlefield, the ring tempts you. Pay one black mana and sacrifice a creature. Return Gollum from your graveyard to your hand. Activate only as a sorcery. They'll take it. Steal my precious thieves. We hate them. A whispered golem voice. It's not the easiest ever, but a foil swamp. Oh, it's actually a, a different swamp. It's the Dead Marshes, which makes a lot of sense. Um, but one of these beautiful map cards. Very pretty. Oh, there we go. Minas Tirith. Legendary land indeed. Minas Tirith enters the battlefield tapped, unless you control a legendary creature. Add a white mana, or pay one and a white and tap to draw a card. Activate only if you attacked with two or more creatures this turn. Beautiful artwork. I would see the white tree and flower again in the court of the kings, and Minas Tirith in peace, says Faramir. Oh, there we are, the call of the ring. We saw this on the card, or the uh, pack art. <laughs> that was on the front of the pack. We've got the extended art version here. A two mana black enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, uh, the ring tempts you. Whenever you choose a creature as your ring bearer, you may pay two life. If you do, draw a card. The ring is mine. is this lidless gaze this is clearly a uh, eye of sauron type thing but the symbol's different i'm not sure what that means it's not the typical expansion symbol for this set which is the ring it's uh something else I don't know why. Uh, four mana. Uh, red and black sorcery. Exile the top card of each player's library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards, and mana of any type can be spent to cast them. With a flashback of cost as well. Interesting. This is an extended art version as well. Ah, Sam. Samwise the Stout-Hearted. Here we have Sam carrying Frodo up the slopes of Mount Doom. A two-mana white peasant, halfling peasant, a two-one, with Flash. 
when Samwise the Stouthearted enters the battlefield, choose up to one target per uh, permanent card in your graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn, and return it to your hand. Then the ring tempts you. Ah, oh, Sam, when Frodo was at his end, at his limits, Sam took him the rest of the way. Can't carry the ring for him, but he can carry him. And this is a alternate border version. Oh, another one of these. Uh, is that supposed to be the Eye of Sauron, maybe? Interesting. Oh, I guess it's a mythic rare. I guess is what that means, maybe. Because if you look here, it says M. So maybe that's what that means. Nope, because this one's just a rare, but okay. <laughs> the Valley of Gorgoroth, um, the Wasteland. Add uh, colorless mana and sacrifice Valley of Gorgoroth. Destroy target non-basic land. But I am going to Mordor, said Frodo. I know that well enough, said Sam. Of course you are, and I'm coming with you. Beautiful, full art on this one. different nasty end. We had the uh, the regular version, but this is the full art version. Uh, two mana, black, instant. Well, same as before. We already saw this, but I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here. I'm not sure. These are, they just look like orcs, maybe. Meeting a nasty end. Not quite clear, though. Uh, we had a Golem patient plotter before, but now we've got an alternate art version with the alternate frame and in foil. Two mana, black creature, as before. but really cool art. Even cooler than the last one, which I did like, but this one's very neat. Uh, another Mary, but a different one this time. Not Mary Adok Brandy Buck, but rather Mary Esquire of Rohan. And a red and white creature. A halfling knight now. With haste. Mary, Esquire of Rohan, has first to strike as long as it's equipped. Whenever you attack with Mary and another legendary creature, draw a card. I think we're very close to the end of this pack. This might have been it. I'm not sure. I haven't been counting, but... Nope. Okay. Yes, it is. <laughs> but we get one more foil card here, and it is a foil food token, which somehow seems appropriate given the, uh, the outrageous amount of food in this set. All kinds of ways to get food. And that brings us back to the start. Well, there was a lot of very shiny cards in there, that's for sure. And it's kind of too bad we got a couple of doubles in a sense, but they are different art versions, I suppose. I still am not quite sure what this logo designates. But, uh, some very fun. 
fun stuff in there. I don't know that our lottery ticket paid off necessarily, but uh, it was a fun pack to open, no doubt. They were all fun packs to open. Um, I am really, really enamored with the, uh, the art in this set. Uh, it's just so, so pretty. And, uh, you know, as well as, uh, just how thematic all of it is. They've done a, a lovely job of it. Uh, which should be no surprise. I mean, you know, Wizards, uh, you know, production value on these, uh, these sets is always remarkable. And, uh, you know, this is such a, such a, a no-brainer kind of, um, crossover, uh, that, like I said before, just, is surprising it hasn't happened sooner. You know, especially when you consider that I imagine, at its heart, Magic the Gathering was heavily inspired by Lord of the Rings at its inception, right? Uh, because, of course, Lord of the Rings inspired so much um, fantasy, you know, um, over the years. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this look at the uh, Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth Magic the Gathering set. I certainly enjoyed going through, uh, looking at all the beautiful cards, reading all the fun flavor text and all that. And uh, I might pick up some more of these <laughs> because I just really like them. I really like, uh, you know, what they've what they've done with this set. It's really cool. Um, I might not pick up another collector's pack though. They are just so expensive. But maybe some more set boosters. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, dear friends, thank you so much for joining me for this video today. I do hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope you found it interesting and fun. But of course, I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time. Farewell for now, my friends. And just as there are many legendary creatures in this set, there are many legendary supporters on this channel. You can see their illustrious names right here. These kind individuals support what I do here on the channel through Patreon and YouTube, and I appreciate it so very much. They also get some exclusive perks along the way, like getting their names here in the credits, like getting early access to all my weekend videos, and there is one particular tier, the Fus Ro Da tier, that gets a very special spoken thank you in every single video. And our Fus Ro Da tier patrons and YouTube members for this video are Angel Garcia, Drummer Britt, Kay Time, Jake Lovney, Rango Steel, James C, Ragnar Ragnarsson, and Dragoon88. Those names will go down in history, the legends of this channel. Once again, a huge thank you to all of our wonderful supporters here. I deeply, deeply appreciate, um, you know, their generosity and what they do to help me continue creating the kind of content that I really like to make and that you hopefully enjoy watching. And if you, dear viewer or listener, are interested in joining their illustrious ranks, please check out the links down below in the video description to my Patreon and YouTube memberships, and you too could be among this fine company. Thank you once again to all our supporters.